At first blush, it is hard to imagine a relationship, formal, conceptual, or otherwise, between the multimedia installation Eat Me, which this is a film still from one element of that work, whose subject is the portrayal of women as objects of cons consumption in the abstract woodcuts. Poppy, however, insisted that though she was commenting on sexism within the installation, this work was, quote, not discourse or a thesis. In place of discourse, understood as a mode of knowledge organized in language, Poppy proposed the idea of epidermicization to describe the way she hoped viewers would sensorially experience the work. She wrote, quote, the project unfolded on the level of epidermicization of an idea, the sensorial as a form of knowledge or consciousness. While here, Poppy describes the prints as remaining on a purely aesthetic plane, within a few years, the reconception of her practice that she undergoes in 1975, conceiving of it as non-discursive, would infiltrate her interpretation of the prints. The most significant revision of the terms in which we understand her woodcuts occurred in 1983 in the context of the first monographic publication on her work. The book appeared as part of an important series dedicated to Brazilian contemporary artists organized by the National Foundation of the Arts in Brazil. As one critic noted at the time of its launching, the book is far from a conventional art publication and is closer to a book object in the spirit of the hybrid textual and visual works, poets, and artists, including Papi, made during the neo-concrete moment. For example, um, she tackles how to represent her um, very important neo-concrete work the Book of Creation from 59 to 60, an example of which is in the collection of the Museum of Modern Art now. Um, so I'm showing you the work on the left and then an um, installation view from the moment, the second neo-concrete exhibition in 1960 of Poppy showing visitors how to manipulate the elements of this work. So in the 1983 publication, she recreated the interactive qualities of this work by encouraging readers to lift um, and fold elements of a page in order to create a three-dimensional form, and to lift and turn a perforated page to fully reveal the multicolored page beneath. It's in this unorthodox book that Poppy first applied her new suggestive title to the woodcuts, Tessalaris or Weavings. And these are two of the woodcuts that were illustrated in the publication. Along with the new title, Poppy posited a chronological delineation similar to the one she'd proposed in 1975, wherein her prints from around 1957 are considered tessellaris, and the woodcuts on white grounds from the early to mid-50s are relegated to an undefined and invisible status. Most generally, the new title underscores the handmade qualities of what are essentially geometric abstract works of art, and posits the notion of a textile's interwoven Wo uh, warp and weft as an artist authorized manner to understand the complex spatial activity in the works. It also evokes not only handiwork but also a connection to traditional culture and invites the consideration of the woodcuts in relationship to the artist's profound interest in indigenous Brazilian culture, an interest that became particularly acute for her in the late 70s and early 80s and would inform the subjects and titles of her pr production from the early 80s on. Beyond this broad, retrospective connection of the prints to interests that informed her later production, the title Tessalaris suggests a direct relationship of the prints to her then recent series of sculptural installations, Tatea, or Web, which she began making in the late 70s and continued to make until the end of her life. This is an installation view of a work from 2002, um, as it was shown at the Venice Biennale in um, 2009. In addition to the formal affinity of parallel white lines in the prints to parallel gold threads in the sculptures, the related titles of weavings and web suggest a conceptual kinship, wherein space, wherein space is conceived of as impregnated with interwoven finite substances that create subtle, subtle shifting planes of movement and light. In her text, Within the 83 volume, Poppy made a series of emphatic statements about the prints that, taken as a whole, delineate the interpretive lens she hoped the new title would impart. Most provocatively, she argued that the Tessalaris should be understood as paintings, not as prints. Unlike in her 1959 text when she stated that the works arrived at the limits of printmaking and the edge of painting, here Poppy posited, without equivocation or caveat, 
The Tessalaris at their foundation are paintings, not prints. Poet Luis Otavia Pimentel's two-page meditation on the prints in the 83 book is an example of just the kind of interpretive license Poppy sought to impart with her new title and insistence on the painterly qualities of the works. For example, and just showing you two more woodcuts. For example, he describes the prints cut lines and traces of wood grain as converging and diverging like the threads of a textile. He does not, however, limit himself to the metaphor of weaving and explores a multitude of organic and sensorial descriptions to explain the experience of looking at Poppy's prints. His descriptions range from spider webs stretched across tree branches that become traps for prey and corners for the eyes, to the experience of sitting in a dark room watching passing headlights filtered through blinds. With these acute associations, Pigmentel characterizes the odd tension in the works between their two-dimensional black and white reality and their virtual movement and elusive luminosity. As Poppy had argued regarding Eat Me, in her 1983 text, she described her role in the prints as one of establishing the conditions for the sensorial as a form of knowledge to emerge. Quote, the gesture is completely controlled. The only thing I allowed myself was to let the porousness of the wood emerge in the blacks like a small vibration. Thus, one more sensitive thing emerged from the materials themselves. The rest was, visually, was vigorously structured in a constructive vein. The relationship of open and closed space, the sensitive and non-discursive things." End quote. While she had discussed her print's relationship to the neoconcrete and, and concrete projects in solely formal terms previously, we now find Poppy arguing that the work's significance primarily exceeds aesthetics, or more accurately, that perception, experience, or epidermatization of the subtle material nature of things, ink, paper, wood, constitutes a non-discursive, sensory-based form of knowledge. In conclusion, while fellow neoconcrete artists, Oitasika and Ligia Clark, have been recognized for their important written contributions to the theory of neoconcretism and beyond, Poppy's significant contribution to the very same theoretical debates has largely gone undiscussed. A factor in this is undoubtedly the perceived secondary status of her chosen medium of printmaking. Therefore, the significance of the artist's continued and insistent returns to her woodcuts as a site of the redefinition of her practice cannot be overstated. In 2000, at the first retrospective exhibition ever held on the artist's work, Poppy yet again foregrounded the print practice. In the accompanying exhibition catalog, she illustrated the prints, the book of creation, and two related books in the center of the plate section, rather than at the beginning as they would naturally fall chronologically. By positioning the prints along with the books at the center of the most complete record of her production to date, Poppy suggested that the works were both a source and an embodiment of her 50 plus years of artistic creation. The chronological delineation of the prints was yet again revised, and the prints on white grounds and black grounds are now, are now exhibited under the umbrella title of Tessalaris. And unsurprisingly, the artist proposed yet another evocative and provocative reinterpretation of the works in the form of a photograph illustrated within the Tessalaris section of the book of her atop a tractor in front of an imposing and deeply furrowed plowed hillside. In addition to encouraging new, stimulating, poetic associations and connections within her production, the photograph is a light-handed but emphatic assertion of the centrality of the woodcuts to Poppy's sense of her artistic identity and legacy. Thank you.